Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Students Teach Orgo. Today we are going to be going to go over reductive emanation. Let's continue. Okay, so what is reductive emanation? Essentially, we are turning an amine into an imine into a secondary tertiary amine. So this basically lets us uh, have remove this double bond on our imine as a whole. So this reaction just lets us do that. And it's quite useful for making tertiary and secondary amines. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to be using a reagent known as sodium cyanoborohydride. Right here, sodium cyanoborohydride. And we want to do this ideally at a pH of 5 to 6. This is just based on the mechanism for sodium cyanoborohydride. But basically, this is going to function in the same way that sodium borohydride does when you perform your uh, reduction reactions. Okay? So what do we do here? Well, we start by forming our imine. We form our imine. Here we form our iminium ion. Pretty much the same thing. And then we reduce it by, and all we do is just eliminate this double bond. So when you eliminate the double bond, make sure that you note the formal charge of nitrogen. If uh, there's, you know, minus one, you need to add a hydrogen. If, if it's zero, then you're good to go. Okay. So this is what reacting a secondary amine is going to get you. So reacting a primary amine is going to get you. Pretty useful reaction. All right, let's continue. Ah, I just realized one more thing. This is not, this is right here. That should just be a methyl. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Let's continue. Predict the product of the following reaction. All right. Well, it's pretty much, you're going to, so you see that you have this uh, secondary amine. So you might be thinking enamine, but in the enamine formation step, right, we still form the aminium ion. If you go to watch our uh, enamine video, you still form that aminium ion. So sodium bor uh, cyanoborohydride is going to come in right at that step and reduce. So we actually don't form any double bond here. That's our final product. All right. It's a good way to avoid forming enemies. All right. Let's for this problem. Let's take some time and think about it. Okay. Essentially, what we do here is we form uh, our imine, and at the same time, I'm just going to reduce it. So this is going to be what the product looks like here. So essentially, there was a double bond here. And all I did was I removed that double bond. Then I'm going to react it again, because this is now a secondary amine. And I can do this again with sodium cyanoborohydride to get a tertiary amine. OK? Now, so just to do this, all I did was I put this nitrogen here, attacked that nitrogen there, and I basically attached it just with once, one bond. Right, so this is this was originally the carbonyl carbon. Here. Okay, no need to do a double bond here. You should do a single bond because it's a reduction reaction. Hopefully that makes sense. Continue. So I'm basically doing number two, but in reverse. Will I get the same products? Let's see. So I will actually get the same product as the previous problem. Now, how does that work out? Well, I'm going to basically do my attack here, remove the carbonyl, right? And then we're gonna remove a hydrogen to get this intermediate. And we're gonna do the attack once again, remove the carbonyl and then remove this hydrogen. That's the shortcut of doing it, right? And it actually gives you the same product as the previous problem. However, this is not true for every single type of reaction. We can't just inter switch the two and assume that we're gonna form the same. Product. So always make sure just because if you reverse the steps does not mean you'll get the same final product. All right, predict the product for this intramolecular uh, sodium cyanoborohydride reaction. Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six atoms that we can make a six membered ring. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And we have a uh, this was technically be number seven, but I didn't mark it. But pretty much, you would attach 
this amine to carbon number six, remove the carbonyl, remove a hydrogen, and that's all you need to do. Okay? I think this is a pretty useful and pretty straightforward reaction as a whole. Well, let's do one more problem. Please predict the reaction for the following products. All right, let's continue. Okay, so nobody said that it has to be uh, solely an aldehyde or a ketone that we're reacting with. It could be an aldehyde or a ketone that is attached to an ester indirectly. Indirectly, I mean, uh, we have on, so we have our aldehyde here, and then on the same chain, we have an ester down the road. So here, I just put it exactly one carbon over, but we can have a 10 carbons over, and it's the same thing. It's only going to react with the aldehyde, and it's going to preserve that ester. This is a unique way of making this kind of molecule, where you have an amino group, and then you have an ester right adjacent to it, with sort of cyanobarhydride. And then down here, you this is just a straightforward, uh, you're going to attack here, remove this, and remove the hydrogen from your tertiary amine. So this is an overall very useful reaction in synthesis and outside of synthesis as well. So I hope that going over it today helped make sense a little bit more of it. And we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.